Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to take the time to actually break our code. So we can do a little bit of debugging. And we can see how it might look if we were manually programming and we're going to run into some errors. And this will help us learn a couple things about the syntax, as well as help us learn a couple quick troubleshooting things and point out a few things that we can take going forward as we learn to program. So we're going to go ahead and open up our hello world.java again. Now you could do this in a notepad again and don't select always. But I wanted to show one thing. I've got Crimson Editor installed in my machine, so I'm going to go ahead and open the file in Crimson Editor. Just to show you that at least better than Notepad, this would give me some syntax highlighting. You can see here that the code looks a little different, which is great. It just helps me to discern a few more things about the code without having to do that manually. So what I want to do is just break a couple things and then recompile and run it so that we can see what happens and how we can start debugging. So let's open up our command prompt again. And let's once again browse to the folder that contains our project. And it's always a good idea to recompile right away, just to make sure there aren't any errors to start with, and run the program. And there we have, hello world, I'm awesome. All right, so now let's see what happens if we were to make a change. First of all, Let's take the semicolon off and save our file, and then let's try to run it again. First, we'll recompile. And here we see an error happened. So the program doesn't recompile. It will still run because I have a previously compiled version, but my changes aren't being effective. So if I would have changed I am awesome, for example, to I am uncertain, and I try to recompile this, My error continues to happen, but my code changes aren't there. So until I can recompile without errors, the code changes won't become effective. So what's going on? Well, when I run my compiler, it tells me exactly what's going on. Hello world.java, line five, error, semicolon expected. And then it shows the line and it actually has a little pointer to where the semicolon should be. Well, that's easy enough to fix. Semicolon, save, javic, hello world.java, Java hello world, hello world, I'm uncertain. So now my changes are working. But now I wanna show you another error. Let's take out the quote, save your file and recompile. Holy crap, what's going on? So I took out a semicolon and now I have one, two, three, four, five errors showing up. So this is the first thing to note. Just because the compiler is showing me that there are five errors, may not mean that there are five errors with my code. It may just mean that there's something wrong that's causing a whole bunch of problems, which we know because we've actually broken our code on purpose. So now we've learned one thing. Don't always assume that the number of errors equals the number of compiler errors. It's not the same. Sometimes it will be, but a lot of times one simple error is going to create a slew of errors that follows along. So what you wanna do is analyze the errors and find the one that seems to be most logically causing an error and fix that, or fix the one you know you can fix right away and then recompile until you ultimately get your code working again. So here, if we look at these, we only have one line of code in this program, so it's very easy to find our errors, but if we had hundreds of lines of code, it'd be a little different. There would be different numbers here, but we know that this is going to be on line five, and we'll note that there's a whole bunch of things. There's a parenthesis expected. Well, we have a parenthesis. Legal start of expression with a comma, I'm not sure that's a problem. Semicolon expected there? Nah, there shouldn't be a semicolon there. Or there, no, no, that's not right. Unclosed string literal. Oh, that's interesting, what does that mean? Well, it basically means my quotes don't match. So now in the future, if I run into an error that says unclosed string literal, I can immediately assume, oh, I bet this means that I don't have matching quotes or matching tick marks if you're using those. So that's what's going to be, of course, and we know this because we broke it. Once again, breaking our code isn't always a bad thing. Now we've learned. And you can see even the syntax highlighting in this program helps me to see that there's something wrong with my string. And in fact, if I was to take this end one off, it would continue to make these characters purple. So you can see at least syntax highlighting is going to help. Now the IDE we'll be using for our course will do this for us as well, so don't feel like you have to download Crimson Editor. 
Again, this is just a sample so that in case someone's working manually, just gives them a little bit of a help to see why you should use something other than Notepad. And so let's go ahead and recompile now our program. And it works. And let's change this back to I am awesome so that we have our code back to where we originally started so that we can repeat this exercise. Now once again, it's time to stretch yourself a little bit. Maybe take this and figure out some other errors you could cause. Break something else. Take out the string brackets for the array here or take out a curly brace and see what happens. And you can do that on your own and start learning more about your code. But that wraps up our look at simple debugging and fixing a program manually. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.